Hey guys, hope you're having a great day so far. I have something I want to share with you. Last night I had a vision uh, as I was laying down and it was just like the Lord gave me this vision of my hands in the air and I was saying, share the video, share the video, Ashvin's video. And I was just like, whoa, what was that? And it came and it kind of hit me really strong. Like, okay, Lord, is something big gonna come of this? Like a lot of people are gonna be affected by this? Are a lot of people gonna be touched and, and, and moved by this? Are they able to see the power of prayer? And I was just going through the through the through the evening and I'm just like, wow. And it just it just kept hitting me really hard. So I want you guys to just understand that, you know, these testimonies, once again, they're not about um, for entertainment. They're not about for show. They're about uh, the, the glory of, of 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 God receiving his 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 revealing here on earth so he he wants to use many people like like this like that he wants to be able to bring people close together um i know that um the lord has brought in i and ashford very close because of this and a lot of you all too have uh brought he's brought in us very close to um his, his word says that um his word pierces through bone and just the effects on just seeing how wonderful he is, how glorious he is, how graceful he is in, in, in all moving power. And it was just something that just came over me, just something that like, it was like a strong vision. And to tell you the truth, I don't even know if I was asleep or if I was awake or halfway through. But all I know is that I seen myself on high share Ashvin's video, share the testimony for others to see, for others to see. And it was given to me that this was going to be part one and that this was going to be the first video to lead everybody through to the rest of the videos, to see the full testimony and to see how wonderful and how gracious God is and to show how quick God can work at times because there was thousands of people praying for Ashvin. And Ashvin, every morning is a joy. Every day he's getting better. The guys here, they're getting better and better and better. And God is just doing major things and major movements all around us. And he wants us to see that. He wants us to give him all the glory, all the honor. So just go about our day like, thank you, Lord. You're amazing. Thank you, Lord. You're wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're awesome. Thank you, Lord. You're my redeemer. He loves us and he just wants to spend time with us. So, um, yes, share, share, share Ashvin's testimony. It's not for our entertainment. It's to do God's work. So, um, testimonies, if you have any testimonies that you, you have of yourself, share them. Use them to uplift other people. I, for one, I know I am trying to do that all the time because I want God to use me. I want the Lord to use me in a mighty way to be able to bring more people to him. I know one of my uh, prayers to him was, Father God, uh, use me, Lord. And so that way I may bring you as many children as possible. And this is one of my other prayers I keep on my wall. And it says, uh, uh, please, Lord, let me know your plan and have a great plan for my life. Please allow me uh, to preach your word, even if it's in dangerous places, <laughs> even if it's all around the world. Scary, but very true. In Jesus name. Amen. Love you, <laughs> Louis. <laughs> so. Uh, prayer walls, prayer closets, prayer chains, prayer rooms, prayer houses, you know, trying our best to allow everywhere we dwell in to represent the Lord and just surround ourselves in all of him. So I believe in you. Uh, share, 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 share Ashvin's video. This is part one. But this is also um, in chapter three of our Matthew series. And we're going to be covering the baptism of Jesus. 
uh, verses chapter three, chapter three, verses thirteen through seventeen. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have preferred. John would have prevented him, saying, "I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me?" But Jesus answered him, "Let it be so now." For thus it is fit, fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down. To rest on him, and behold, a voice from heaven said, "This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased." So, a lot going on here. A lot of people are coming to see this great baptism. John's John's baptizing everybody from all the lands all around. And um, back in the day, they use baptism like, um, "Oh, you're one of us now." Just like these different religions that just popped up everywhere. And just decided to do their own thing, um, and just um, kind kind of like today, you know, um, things continue, iniquities continue, sin continues, uh, uh, behaviors continue, continue. If there's no chains that are broken, if there's no bondage that are broken, if there's no repentance of uh, of a of a contrite heart and and breaking away from our past and 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 searching for the Lord to find truth. So there's a lot going on here. You got Pharisees here. You got all kinds of people here. You got people just curious coming. You have um, Jesus um, surprising John and saying, no, you're going to baptize me. And John's like, what? Like, you're the leader. And Jesus is like, kind of like, yes, I know. And this needs to be done for all righteousness to be fulfilled. So I'm going to go into this right here. And share a little bit of something, something with you. John had expecting that Jesus' baptism would be much greater than his. When suddenly Jesus came to him and asked him to baptize him, John felt unqualified. He wanted Jesus to baptize him. Why did Jesus ask to be baptized? It was not for repentance, for sin, because Jesus never sinned. To fulfill all righteousness. Jesus, the perfect man, didn't need baptism for sin, but accepted it. And God showed his approval. Put yourself in John's shoes. Now, this is something that when I read, I thought it was very, very interesting how uh, just the, the point of reference, okay? Because you have people, right? And they start ministries and they're like, okay, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to like bring as many people to you. I want to honor you. And then next thing you know, it's like for them to hand that all over to somebody else. They're like, no, Lord, like, um, I'm, I'm responsible for these people. Um, no, Lord, uh, that means giving them all up like lord uh you gave this to me and and this is what's going on here so it's asking you to put yourself in john's shoes so john is preaching all over he's known for preaching all over repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand get right you know uh so many different uh legalistic people and uh, uh as far as the garrisons with the roman empire like different lands are like mad at him because they're in their sinful ways and so he's actually has built a movement uh, uh uh and his whole foundation is to honor the lord and do right and so he's built a movement he has a group of people like i have no idea how big this group is let's use our imaginations but here we go put yourself in john's shoes your work is going well people are taking notice Everything is growing, but you know that the purpose of your work is to prepare the people for Jesus. John, 
You can find that in John uh, chapter 1, verse 35 to 37. Now, Jesus has arrived and his coming tests your integrity. Will you be able to turn your followers over to him? John passed the test by publicly baptizing Jesus. Soon, he would say, he must increase. He must increase, but I must decrease. And you can find that in, in John chapter 3, verse 30. Can we, like John, put our egos and profitable work aside in order to point others to Jesus? Are we willing to lose some of our status so that way everyone else will benefit? The doctrine of the Trinity means that God is three persons and yet one in essence. In this passage, all three persons of the Trinity are present and active. God the Father speaks, God the Son is baptized, and God the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus. God is one, yet in three persons at the same time. This is one of God's comprehensible, you can comprehend this, mysteries. It's no mystery at all. It's just a lot of people don't know of this. A lot of people are not properly taught. A lot of people are born, uh, like in the Bible says, either you're born at the top and you're a branch bearing fruit. You know, maybe you had a good family. You had the word your whole life or you're just a broken branch at the bottom, you know, and just raised just in darkness, not really knowing. But that's what the Lord comes to bring light, to bring the good news, to bring the gospel, to bring laughter, to bring joy, to bring excitement, to be able to allow you to really know what the truth is, to allow you to really know what love is. And, 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 and to come out of abandonment and to come out of uh, depression and anxiety and uh, it's too late or I'm too old or it's not in the cards for me. That's not how my God speaks. That's not how our Lord speaks. You will never find that in the Bible that it's too late and you can never be used. Actually, you will find like so many times in the Bible that says that you can and all things are possible. And uh, there is no age limit. And many men and women of God were used at different ages, like Abraham and Sarah having their, their child, uh, Isaac, at a very, very old, old age in their 80s. So um, once again, I love you guys. God bless you. Uh, share the video. Share the testimony. Uh, do whatever you can to, to share and support. Once again, our testimonies are not for uh, public uh, uh, entertainment. Like, like we go to church and we hear the testimony and we're just like, wow, that's amazing. And then we leave the church and then nothing happens. The testimony is meant to be shared. So you hear of these testimonies and you're like, man, did you hear what happened? The little girl, she wasn't able to walk. Now she can walk again. Uh, the man, they said that he'll be in a wheelchair and some other guy came up and prayed for him. And he got out of the wheelchair. Like what? Where? Yeah, this church here, there. Come share Jesus with them any way possible. The Bible says to have an answer for everything. And, 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 and when you put your all into the word of God and you put your all into him, he will make sure that he will equip you. He will make sure that you are set to be able to, to, to uh, 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 bring people in to allow them to be free. Because the devil's out like a roaring lion. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to take your testimony and throw it under the, gar under the table, throw it in the garbage, and tell people, oh, well, that was last year. Oh, that was five years ago. That was 10 years. That was 20 years ago. The whole time that every single day that you wake up is a testimony. And so much more when you can just share the word of God and be a part of a big testimony. So, like I said, share, share, share. Um, uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Notification, notification, notification. And uh, just whatever else the Lord puts on your heart.
So I'm going to pray for you guys right now and just hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and night. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We come before you, Lord, and ask you that whoever is in need, Lord, that you, 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 you help them right now, Father God, that you touch them right now, Lord, that you heal their minds, you heal their hearts, Father God, and you give them peace right now, Father God. I pray that whatever they're going through, that they're comforted, Lord, and they know that it's not too late, Father God, that they know it's not too late, that, that, that you want to work in them and work in them in a mighty way, Father God. Lord, you have so much for them and so much in store for them, Father God, that if they would just submit and follow you, Lord, that they will see and taste that you are good, Father God, that they will taste and see that you are righteous and that you are holy, Lord, and that you love us. And that you don't want anything from us, but everything for us, Father God. You just want our heart, Lord. You just want our minds. You just want our spirit, Father. And you just want us, Lord. While the world said we weren't worthy, you said that we were. And while the world said we were useless, you placed us high on a pedestal, Lord, and said, I can use them. And you sent your son, Lord. You sent your son. To come and die on a bloodstained cross for us, Lord. To not only free us, but to teach us and show us and guide us. And allow us to be able to be called your children, Lord. To allow us to be able to be fully taught, educated, used, and trained by you, Lord. To be able to bring more lost and more broken, Father God. You said that you are for the lost and for the broken, it doesn't matter status, Lord. You are here for the lost and the broken and the hopeless, Father God. Or even the people that just know that there's more to life. Maybe fear of death. Maybe fear of accidents, Lord. We pray for anybody that's maybe lost a child, Father God. We pray for anybody that maybe has lost a loved one, Lord, that you comfort them, that you give them peace, that you give them harmony, Father God. That you allow them to know that everything is going to be okay, Father. That your life and everyone's life, Father God, is in your hands, Lord. And that you love us, Lord. You love your children, Father God. And that you're here to comfort them, sustain them, and guide them, Lord. So, Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you draw them in, Lord. And you guide them, Father God, to a wonderful, beautiful place, Lord. A wonderful, beautiful church, a wonderful, beautiful place where there is no fear of judgment, Father God. And there is no fear and condemnation that is too late or maybe how far they might have gone. I pray that you cover their minds and cover their hearts and you cover their souls. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And if you guys maybe need a church to go to, like I'm always requesting, Maranatha, 4301 West Diversity, Chicago Tabernacle on Belmont and Cicero, Anthem Church on, on Montrose and Avers, Jesus Image on, uh, in Florida, uh, Todd Weiss Church, you can look it up. And uh, if you have any requests, any prayer requests or anything, you know, you have questions, people that need uh, homeless, shelters, materials, supplies, soup kitchens, you name it, just reach out. In Jesus' mighty name, have a wonderful, beautiful, great day. God bless.